Okay, so when we're looking at safeguarding, what do we do in the nursery that helps to safeguard children and prevents them going towards the child protection circle? Um, we do risk assessments. We do risk assessments. And what do those risk assessments cover? Everything, you're right. So we're looking here at the environment. Yeah. We're looking at staff. And we're looking at resources. What else do we do? So we have a no mobile phone policy. Yeah. And social media and stuff is kept in order. Yeah, so we have data mm -hmm. protection. We have social media all together in one policy. So we've got two policies here. Is that relevant? Yes, lots of policies that we have. Absolutely. So it's all our policies. Anything else? We have DBS checks. We do. We do DBS checks. This pen's not going to be any better. <laughs> What else do we do apart from DBS checks? What form did you have to complete for me? Oh, the um, background, uh, the internal. Yeah. So it's the internal checks, and they're important because when you do the DBS check. Um, there are 10 reasons that somebody is disqualified from working with children, but only five show on a DBS check. And that means that we have to have our own internal checks to look at the other five. Anything else we do? Recording accidents. Okay, so we record accidents what happens to the information once the accidents are recorded you can see where most of the accidents are absolutely so these can be reviewed and we can eliminate common areas where there are accidents anything else It would. Tracking would be one because tracking helps us look for early signs of delay yep. and some signs of delay could be because they are having difficulties elsewhere in their life. So tracking definitely. And like the key placing system because then you Absolutely. know you're right key children and if something changes. So key workers. What about food and meal times? Is that a safeguarding issue? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It could be that some children are underweight. It could be that some children are overweight. Um, both would indicate ill health. And we also have a duty to educate children into healthy eating. Okay, anything else you've got? Um, we have passwords for the kids. Yep, so I'm going to put that, we have passwords, I'm going to put it as security. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we also have qualifications. Yeah. 
We have CPD, which is your personal development. We have ratios. We have medicines. Now, there's a lot more. But when you begin to look at how much of this we do, which is actually safeguarding, everything we do is designed <coughs> to stop a child moving to this point. And everything here that I've outlined is actually part of the statutory framework, the welfare requirements. And it's in here that you start to see what does the framework actually say and how do we interpret that into our nursery? So I'm going to give you an example um, under qualifications, let me not find it, okay, so it says in group settings the manager must hold at least a full and relevant level three qualification and at least half of the other staff must hold at least a full and relevant level two qualification. The manager should have at least two years experience of working in an early year setting or have at least two years other suitable experience. The provider must ensure there is a named deputy who in their judgment is capable and qualified to take charge in the manager's absence. So for jelly beans, are you shocked that that's what the framework half says? The people yeah, only half. The rest can still be unqualified. Are you shocked that that's what this says? <laughs> yeah. So what have we done here at this nursery? Yeah, absolutely. We're going over and above. Because although these are the rules that we must meet, I always want to try and go over and above. For me, these are what you have to do. But to be a good or outstanding nursery, I want us to be right up there. Okay?